hello and uh, welcome to this video about uh, STM32 Cubemix advanced features. In this video, we will address the four advanced features of STM32 Cubemix. First one is the library selection between HL and LL. Second one is the function call control. Third one is a callback setup. And last one is the interrupt settings. I will start from Cubemix interface and I will use CubeID to uh, look at the code generated. So let's start. First, library selection between HL and LL. What are these HL and LL? HL is the abs hardware abstraction layer. It provides an API independent from the STM32 used. And the uh, main point about HL that it allows easier porting from uh, one STM32 to the other. Also, HL provides an API that makes first tests really easy. So it's really an easy library that uh, allows you to start uh, prototyping. The second one is the LL, so the low layer. This one is providing uh, mostly a register level abstraction API. It allows complete control on the implementation. You, you know exactly what happens. The drawback will be that uh, obtaining a working use case will re require more effort compared to the HL. But uh, on the other hand, it will use uh, less flash memory. Now let's start from uh, Cubemix uh, first screen. We, we are using Cubemix 6.4 here. Uh, and um, we will use the board selector to select one board. I will select the discovery board and take our latest uh, U5 board and start a project with this and initialize all peripherals and don't activate trust zone. Here it is. So you can see all the GPIOs that are already initialized. And uh, you can see, for instance, here in the connectivity, all, the, all these peripherals, the analog also. And you can see here, the, we will activate the iCache to get best performance for this device and to avoid any uh, warning when we generate the code. The clock configuration is already set, so let's move to Project Manager and uh, name our project. So we are on the STM32 U5 Disco, and uh, this is uh, test one. We will use a Cube ID. And now let's go to Advanced Settings. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the HL selection. So you can see here that we have sometimes only LL and sometimes you can select between HL and LL. So let's first generate the code uh, with the default uh, settings. So I click generate the code and this code generation will generate all the initialization function for the peripherals. Okay, so now let's open the, the project. And the project is open in Cube ID. So let's open the Cube ID. Here we can see it was successfully imported. Let's close this and we have our project. Now, if I see what was generated in the main.c file, you can see that uh, we have all our initialization function. And if I go to the first one, I press F3, you see everything is using HL API. And same for, if I go back, same for other HL, HL. Now let's go back to the Cubemix and select, for example, GPIO 
initialize with LL and also initialize with LL for RCC and generate again the code and this time we will not open the project as it is uh, already open so I will close it and go back to kubeide and you can see the system was updated with using LL interface instead of using HL same for RCC so let's find RCC initialization which is a system clock here and you can see that LL is used to initialize so it's really a simple way to select what you want how you want to initialize it is possible to mix LL and HL for this you you will need to read the documentation that is provided back here you have one user man manual for each STM32 series that is called description of the HL and low layer drivers. And so this one will give you uh, all details how to use each of the layers and how to mix them. Okay, now after library selection, let's switch to function call control. The purpose of STM32 CubeMX is to generate a project structure and to provide implementation of the initialization of all peripherals selected. This initialization is done through function calls, as we could see before. And uh, here are the controls we can have on the generation of this function, and we will see in detail with uh, CubeMX. So you can order them. There is some dependency to manage. So put one function initialization function before the other. You can avoid the implementation of the call, but keep implementation of the function itself. So you have the function and you will call it by yourself at some point later. Uh, you can also remove uh, completely the initialization of a specific peripheral. Uh, if you want to remove it temporarily or for debug purpose. And you can also uh, set the function to be static or not. So back to our CubeMX. So here we had our uh, driver selection and now we will address this part of the advanced uh, settings. So you have this column to generate the code. So you can simply uh, remove the code generation. For instance, here I don't want to generate UCPD and it will not generate at all. We can see in the cube ID, so it's UCPD is here and we will see it will disappear. So you have the rank here that gives you uh, the order of calling of this function and you can change it using these settings. For instance, you want I2C2 to be called before I2C1. You just need to do this. And here you have the colon to not generate function call. So if you want to put the function call later, you can click here, for instance, for uh, USB. We have the function call of USB here. So this one should be removed, but the, the implementation that we have here should remain. And then we have the visibility, static or not so. By default, all functions are defined as static, as you can see here, static, all, all these functions are static. So let's define one function, for example, SPI, that is not static. And let's generate the code. So we close here and select here and see what happened. So let's come back here. So first thing we did is removing, if I come back, we removed UCPD. So here you can see we don't have UCPD here, neither in the implementation, it's completely removed. Second thing we have done is to change a square C1, square C2 order. You can see a square C2 
are is called before i square c1 so this is really useful when you have some dependencies between some peripherals for instance the next point is do not generate function calls so we didn't generate we asked to not generate function call for the usb initialization so you can see here it's removed no no more usb initialization but we kept the implementation of this initialization let's come back to the main and last point we change the spi2 static so you can see that spi2 here is defined here but is no more defined here so you will find it in the main dot h that was created with all the, the defines and you can find now spi2 here so this is all what you can do with this uh, part now let's address the register callback part callback setup uh, this option is specific to hl and uh, HL is able to manage the interrupt handlers for peripherals and each interrupt handler is able to call user-defined functions on specific events. These functions are um, some default callbacks provided as a weak function. Now HL also provides specific code to register callback that can be activated through compilation flag and uh, STM32CubeMX allows this activation. This is the purpose actually of these uh, checkboxes. For instance, when you enable a callback for ADC, you will be allowed to call uh, HL ADC register callback. So let's uh, try this and for instance, activate callback for the UART we have here. So we have UART enable disable of the callbacks so let's generate the code let's see where the change was done actually it is in this configuration file for hl so the beginning you have the activation of each module that is used in hl and at the end you have the flags for each register callback and you can see that we activated the uart register callback so let's see what it means so we will do a search in the code and you can see that well this is what we have done and here in the drivers so in the hl there is an impact in the hl uart you use this flag to define specific callbacks and you in the source code uart register callback so this one is under this flag and allows the registration of each callback for the different features of the UART and then you can call this function and uh, use it uh, to define all your specific uh, callbacks so that's the point of this feature here to activate the user callback now let's move to our last advanced feature which is interrupt settings this settings is actually accessible through NVIC peripheral in code generation tab and not in the advanced settings. So in this tab, you can simply remove the interrupt handler if you already manage it in a specific file, for instance, or generate uh, the interrupt handler but remove the call to the HL IRQ handler associated so that you have your own implementation. It allows also to move the interrupt enable at the end of all initialization if you need to have every initialization done before activating interrupts. And 
among these uh, interrupt activated at the end, you can control the order of activation. So let's see this in Cubemix. So this one is here in NVIC settings, here in the code generation. So you can see by default there are no interrupts activated for the peripherals. So we will activate, for instance, interrupts for our UART here in NVIC. So activate this interrupt. Also for the 2i square c, we want to manage uh, interrupts in i square c. And that's it. Go back to the NVIC configuration here. You can see that all these interrupts have been added and we can set this interrupt here in this column. You can activate, for instance, all these interrupts to be set at the end of the initialization code. And each interrupt here can be ordered. For instance, we want to have the UART at the beginning and then I square C. And uh, here, for instance, you don't want for UART to use the HL implementation. So let's see what happens. So back to CubeID. Let's go back to our main.c. We are in interrupts. So in our interrupt handler, we have so the, all the default interrupt handlers. And we are, have now i square c with the call to the HL IRQ handler. So same for all i square c. And you can see for the user, the HL was not called. And if we come back to main.c, you can see that this function was added to be able to uh, activate the interrupts. So I will go to the implementation. And we can see that the user is activated before the i square c. So that's it for this configuration. And uh, that's it for the advanced settings of uh, STM32 CubeMX. Thank you for your attention.